And I'll call the member for Sandringham. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'm um, grateful to also contribute to the uh, address in reply. Now, at the start of your second term, I fully expect that uh, my contribution to the address in reply will not have as much fanfare and celebration and audience as uh, those members making their inaugural speeches. But, no one uh, cares about you now. Uh, but at the start of your second term, there are still important things to say. Uh, and um, uh, I do want to congratulate, uh, Deputy Speaker, uh, those uh, colleagues across the aisle who are making uh, their inaugural speeches um, during the course of, of these weeks. Um, it is a defining moment uh, in your entry to public life. It's an opportunity to talk not just about your own story, your uh, reason for being and reason for acting, uh, but also your um, uh, vision for a, a better community and better Victoria. And uh, I wish those to uh, make their speeches uh, all the very best in the coming days and, and coming weeks. Uh, Deputy Speaker, I, I wanted to use this opportunity to uh, address a couple of things. Uh, I, I think uh, far too often thanks are left for the end, but I wanted to commence by thanking uh, all of those people who contributed to a, uh, well, a successful campaign in the uh, Sandringham District uh, during the 2022 election campaign. Um, for those of you who, uh, uh, who operate in this chamber, who are, who are members of this chamber, you will know that the thing that uh, motivates and drives me, for those in our community, in my community, uh, who know me, uh, will know the things that motivate and drive me are just a good outcome. Uh, it's a good community benefit. Uh, it's to better a community, to improve a community. Um, and seldom uh, do I make things political, because frankly I think politics for the sake of politics simply leads to more politics is an and is unproductive. Um, so it's with that spirit that I wish to, or it's in that spirit that I wish to thank a, a number of people. Firstly, the uh, some 46,000 electors of the Sandringham District. Uh, I was uh, quietly pleased, humbled uh, by the support that my campaign, our campaign received in the Sandringham District. Uh, the swing towards uh, me uh, and to the party I represent, the Liberal Party, uh, was around 5%. Uh, and in the course of the 2022 election, uh, that is uh, a reasonable um, achievement. Um, I would like to thank uh, my electorate chair, Jennifer O'Brien, uh, my electorate executive, uh, the former member for Sandringham, uh, Murray Thompson. I'd like to thank uh, those community leaders who saw that my purpose was not political, but my purpose was to do everything I could to advocate to the government, uh, to fight for good ideas, to fight for good outcomes. Uh, so for all those community members, from uh, cricket club presidents, soccer club presidents, footy club presidents, school principals, uh, community leaders right across the Sandringham district, uh, too numerous to name, uh, but I'm grateful for their collaboration uh, and for their recognition uh, that my purpose was for the betterment of our community. Uh, I would also like to thank my family, uh, my uh, wife Kate, my children, Abigail and Charles, Abby who was here just earlier today for a portion of the day and enjoys coming with her daddy to work. Um, uh, perhaps uh, conscripts to the cause at, at some time, but I, I seriously couldn't do it without them. Their sacrifice uh, is something which um, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to repay. So I think that's important to mention too. I think that uh, uh, there was huge support in the Sandringham District for uh, the campaign that, uh, that we ran because it was a comprehensive campaign with a comprehensive plan for our community. Uh, there were commitments made and recognition given to the needs of our community across a number of different areas, Deputy Speaker. Uh, firstly, uh, to our Sandringham Hospital. Now, uh, for those members who have been here for some time, they will know that I was born at Sandringham Hospital, so I declare that interest up front. Uh, but it is the caring heart of our community. It really is. And it's part of Alfred Health. And my concern uh, is that as it's part of a larger health system uh, and the uh, needs of the Paran campus uh, of the Alfred are so great, 
uh, that Sandringham, may, Sandringham Hospital may very well get forgotten in that equation. So I see this as an opportunity for me as a local member uh, to advocate for the needs of Sandringham Hospital. Uh, I, I'm grateful uh, to uh, those community members, those uh, community members who not only work at the hospital uh, and volunteer at the hospital, raise money for the hospital, uh, and are also patients at the hospital, but also to the professional staff of the hospital as well. Um, and uh, you know, my commitment for a, a $25 million investment in the Sandringham Hospital uh, would have gone a long way. Uh, I will, I'll declare cards now, Deputy Speaker. I will continue to advocate for the needs of Sandringham Hospital in this term of Parliament. Uh, it's not just the right thing to do, uh, but uh, I, I, I think people would expect me to do that, and not only in this place, but in our community as well. I'll continue to do that. And I look forward to an ongoing, fruitful uh, conversation with, uh, with those in Alfred Health in relation to the needs of the Sandringham Hospital. Uh, of course, it was the uh, Liberal Nationals who first committed to remove uh, the level crossings at um, Hyatt, uh, at both Hyatt Road and Wickham Road. Uh, and uh, that was after a four, almost five year campaign, a community campaign where we uh, sought to engage not only community members uh, in and around Hyatt, but also Hyatt uh, businesses and uh, local government as well, both the Bayside Council and the Kingston Council. Uh, my strong preference as expressed in that announcement was for rail under road. I think uh, Sky Rail, which is the government's plan at uh, the Hyatt Road and Wickham Road level crossings will divide our community. Uh, and I uh, dare say that that is the view of the large majority of our community as well. Uh, my preference, our community's preference is for rail under road. I received an email uh, about that matter uh, just a few hours ago. Um, when the government announced that they were uh, ridding the Frankston line of every level crossing, um, perhaps what wasn't as clear uh, from that headline was the fact that the government decided to not remove but close the Latrobe Street level crossing, which is between uh, Mentone and Cheltenham stations. Now, there's an issue with that, Deputy Speaker. The issue being uh, that if you close that crossing, it forces more traffic to busy Mentone and busy Cheltenham. Uh, my commitment ahead of the last election was to keep the Latrobe Street crossing open. See, I just don't think that the government decision making on this particular matter uh, made I dare say far removed from the reality of my community, understands deeply the circumstance of my community. When the government made that announcement, uh, I went to the community, I surveyed 1,500 households. Uh, of the 400 or so responses that I got within a week, um, some 90% uh, or so of respondents, uh, sorry, 98% of respondents said that they weren't asked by the government about their view on this matter before the government made an announcement. Uh, and uh, a close to 90% of those respondents said they wanted that level crossing left open, uh, and for very good reason. So within a short period of time after that announcement, I went to my community, I asked my community what their view was. Uh, I formulated a view, I formulated a response and a commitment that we would keep that level crossing open. Now, in a recent... Um, adjournment uh, matter. I raised this for the uh, Minister for Transport uh, uh, for, for, for Infrastructure, um, the Honourable Jacinda Allen, and in her response she said to me that uh, the government's at the early planning stage of uh, the closure of the Latrobe Street crossing and the removal of the Hyatt Road and Wickham Road level crossings. That to me means that there's opportunity. There's opportunity for the government to uh, not only hear uh, but deeply listen to uh, the needs of my community at Latrobe Street to keep that level crossing open and at Hyatt Road and Wickham Road uh, for there to be a rail under road solution at both of those level crossings. And uh, uh, I will be campaigning for that end. I was the only uh, candidate uh, in my district, uh, Deputy Speaker, to advocate for the needs of Sandringham College. Uh, $10 million has been committed to Sandringham College for stage one uh, of their redevelopment. Uh, Sandringham College is over two campuses. Uh, $10 million, frankly, in this world doesn't buy you much. 
to effectively rebuild both campuses, uh, the price tag's closer to 40 or $50 million. Now, that first $10 million commitment for Stage 1 was made a couple of budgets ago, uh, and a commitment was given by the former Education Minister uh, and the former member for Monbulk um, when he visited the school, uh, that once one uh, funding envelope of $10 million was made, once that commitment was made, more would be coming. Uh, well, a couple of budgets on, and that commitment hasn't been made. And I was disappointed, uh, Deputy Speaker, that during the course of the election, uh, the Labor government didn't commit the second lot of $10 million to Sandringham College, because what they effectively said to the Sandringham College community was, during the term of this parliament, during the term of this parliament, there is not the second stage funding for that school. Because as we know, when we make commitments during the courses of election campaigns, they don't need to be delivered in the first year of government. They could be delivered in the second, the third or the fourth year of government. And uh, the, the needs of Sandringham College are great. I mean, there's a, by some measure, the place is crumbling down around the kids. The teaching and the learning is fantastic. It's great. The culture of the staff is great. Uh, the um, educational leadership of the principal and the, 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 the leadership team at Sandringham College is impressive. Uh, but the buildings don't match what they seek to achieve, and that must be addressed. Um, of course, I made uh, commitments also to Beaumaris North Primary School, Beaumaris Primary School, Stella Maris Primary School, Sacred Heart Primary School, uh, and, and those are all very important commitments as well. I'll continue to advocate for the needs of those primary schools during the course of this term. Uh, we made a commitment to upgrade the Trevor Barker Oval. Uh, to improve uh, change room facilities and to cater for women's and girls' football uh, there. Uh, we made a commitment to reinstate neighbourhood residential zones, to give clarity uh, for development uh, within uh, the Bayside and uh, Kingston municipalities. Uh, two dwellings maximum on a tidal site and a mandatory height limit of eight metres or two storeys. Um, we made a commitment to preserve the vast majority of the gas and fuel land, 6.3 hectares of land on the Pean Highway in Hyatt. Uh, and uh, we also made a commitment to better protect our area's greatest environmental and ecological asset in the Ricketts Point Marine Sanctuary. Uh, these were just some of the commitments that we made during the course of the election campaign. And as I said uh, earlier, Deputy Speaker, I am certain uh, that the result that was delivered uh, to me and to the Liberal Party in the Sandringham District was as a result of the work that was undertaken, not just in the last 12 months, not just in the last four weeks of an election year, but over the four-year term, uh, to engage with community members on issues that were important to them, to advocate for them, to fight for them, for their needs, for their interests, for a better community. Uh, now, since the election's uh, taken place, Deputy Speaker, the um, newly elected Leader of the Opposition uh, the member for Hawthorne has asked me to uh, step up and into a shadow cabinet role and I was humbled uh, to accept uh, his invitation to be Victoria's shadow treasurer. Uh, in that time uh, since I was appointed at the end of last year, Deputy Speaker, there have been a number of things uh, that have come across uh, my desk which are of deep concern to me. I'll mention um, just a couple in the time that I have remaining. Yesterday, uh, there was, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia made a decision to raise interest rates um, in this state. I am certain that there will be people, uh, homeowners right around this state, mums and dads trying to put food on the table to make ends meet, to pay their school bills, to pay their power bills, to pay their mortgage, who will find that an interest rate rise uh, will not be in their favour. It will make, it will making it, make making ends meet all that more difficult. But something we should also remember, Deputy Speaker, is the fact that uh, the state of Victoria is also subjected to interest rate rises. Uh, yesterday's interest rate rise of 0.25% uh, uh, will increase, um, uh, will result in an additional $390 million in net debt by 25-26 for the state of Victoria. Now, we talk in millions and we talk in billions. Let me put that into context. $390 million could fund over 4,000 maternity nurses, 1,860 public housing units, 39 breast cancer centres, or fund more than 5,600 classroom teachers. We have a debt problem in this state. 
We really do. And uh, frankly, Deputy Speaker, I'm not convinced by the government's uh, plan or lack of plan to, uh, to deal with that particular issue. I look forward to a, uh, a contributing uh, more broadly during the course of this term of parliament uh, and advocating for the needs of my community.